A week ago in Stillwater, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State battled the Colorado Buffaloes into the fourth quarter. Finally, CU's superior talent prevailed. The Buffs' seventh victory set the stage for the seniors' farewell salute. Seven players will say goodbye to the Folsom Field faithful, hoping to ruin their finale and CU's homecoming, the Missouri Tigers. It's Mizzou and CU. The kickoff's coming up. <laughs> For Sports presents CU Buffaloes football. Live from Folsom Field in Boulder, it's the University of Missouri Tigers versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Welcome to a very windy Folsom Field. It's another Big 8 Conference matchup here on News 4 between the ninth ranked CU Buffaloes and the Missouri Tigers. Hi, everybody. I'm Les Shapiro along with Dave Logan. Dave, a lot of people see this as an easy win for CU, but it won't be easy if the Buffs don't step it up on defense. Well, they've got to do a better job, obviously, on the defensive side of the football. The last four games, they've given up an average of 36 points. Now, you figure in Nebraska and Kansas with big outbursts, and you certainly have to temper some of uh, some of the way you look at that defense. But I, I know this staff is not completely satisfied in the last couple of games here today and, of course, next week against Kansas State in Manhattan. They must play better on the defensive side of the ball. Well, as he has been most of the season, John Hessler will be a quarterback for the CU Buffs. He threw for five touchdowns last week against Oklahoma State. Might be a little tougher to throw the ball today, though. Well, I mean, this is a paraglider's nightmare, I guess, would be the way we describe these conditions. Hessler, I think, has had a had a very good year. He's thrown for 16 touchdowns. He's thrown for over 1,600 yards. And keep in mind, this was a guy that they were not counting on to get significant playing time this year. So when you take that into consideration, I think John Hessler has played very well. On the visiting sideline today, an old war horse, we've got Larry Smith coaching the Missouri Tigers, a guy who's won at USC. He's won at Arizona but he's struggling to get this Missouri program back on track. Well, it's been a difficult task. I think the, the program certainly was down when Larry Smith came there. He's a very good coach. He's a proven coach and a guy that has uh, turned schools into winning uh, programs. And, and yet Larry Smith right now will start seven freshmen today on both sides of the football combined. So well, it's tough to win with young players. It's tough to get things turned around. That This will be their 12th consecutive losing season in Columbia. Do you expect to see the ball kept on the ground by both teams today? I, I think they'll probably be more running by CU than they normally might. You can still throw the ball a little bit. Where, where the wind will affect them today, I think, will be in a long passing game. You just can't get that ball up in the wind because it's going to carry out of bounds if you throw near the sideline. Now, I'm interested to see how the kickoff goes, the opening kickoff, and it's right around the corner here in Bolt. The crowd's still shuffling into Folsom Field in Boulder. I would imagine we'll have a few empty seats today, primarily because of the weather. A little cooler and a little windier than we expected. Let's take a look at some of those numbers. The temperature today, 55 degrees, humidity at 34 percent. The wind started out kicking slightly this morning and has just been building and building as the afternoon wears on. You see 20 to 40 miles per hour. It's probably closer to that 40 mile per hour mark. As a matter of fact, they've already taken down most of the flags from around the city because it is blowing so briskly and they were afraid the flags would get torn. Ralphie three getting ready to come out of the chute. As we take a look at the series record between these teams, it is the 60th meeting. These two go back a long ways. Missouri leads the series, 33 wins, 23 losses, and three ties. But CU has won the last 10 games, including last year's game in Columbia, where CU took it 38 to 23. Let's go down to the field now. As always, our Mark McIntosh will be giving us reports from the sideline. Mark, what have you got? Thank you, Les. You know, first, the good news. Uh, it is rather warm down here. It's not uncomfortable whatsoever in terms of... Uh, the temperature, but the wind down here is just unbelievable. People holding on to their hats. The Buffs are coming out on the field. You guys talked about this. But it's going to be very, very difficult to throw the ball. The kicking game will be much affected by all this wind. 
We've been talking about the buffs and their attitude coming into this game. It seemed like last week in the locker room after the ball game down at Stillwater, this team had finally kind of sunk into this team, which is fairly young. A lot of juniors and sophomores and even some freshmen playing. That you've got to go out, regardless of the competition, each and every week and play 60 minutes of football. Earlier in the year when they would struggle against teams of inferior talent, after the game, you talked to them, and it seemed like they didn't really have a good grasp as to why they were struggling. But it seemed like maybe a light went on that a lot of these young kids had after the ball game against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. But the problem is us. We haven't been coming out focused for 60 minutes and playing good football. They seemed embarrassed by the fact that a team that is uh, rebuilding like Oklahoma State is would take them into the fourth quarter. So I look to see Colorado come out very focused. It's the final game for seven seniors, the final home game this year. And I think they're out to make a statement today that they are indeed a top 10 team here in the country. And I expect them to come out and play a very solid fundamental ball game. And I know they hope to uh, really run away from the Missouri Tigers and prove to a lot of people around the country that they are a very good football team. You know, they've been stung the past couple of weeks. At Iowa State, they heard the fans saying overrated. They heard the stand, the fans in Oklahoma State saying the very same thing. This team has been stung, and they're out to prove that they are indeed a top 10 team. Back up to you guys. Yes, they certainly are. After the win at Oklahoma State last week, CU moved up one notch to number nine in the Associated Press poll. They are number 10 in the USA Today CNN Coaches poll. And the Buffs have been ranked in every poll since 1989, 112 weeks in a row. Well, you see the CU ball club at midfield. They are honoring the seniors today. This is the final home game of the year, so it's the final home game for the seven CU seniors. And as they come out, we'll tell you who they are. Mark had mentioned this team will be focused today, if for no other reason that the Buffs have lost their last two games at home to Kansas and to Nebraska. And the last time they've lost consecutive contests at Folsom Field was way back in 1988 when Oklahoma and Oklahoma State did the trick. Well, the first senior out, T.J. Cunningham, starting quarterback. Number 94 is Kerry Hicks, the starting defensive tackle. 63, Heath Irwin, the fine offensive guard. Number three is Donnell William Eady. Number 95, the guy who's fought through knee injuries his whole career, defensive end Daryl Price. And number 64, the All-American candidate at center, Brian Stoltenberg. And the final CU uh, senior running through the pack is Neil Voskaritschian having a fine season as the Buffs place kicker. I'll tell you what, when you, when you talk about a team like this with only seven seniors, that is an incredibly low number. Most programs usually will graduate between 13 to 18 seniors, sometimes even 20 seniors per year. And to think this team is losing only seven players uh, speaks highly of what CU fans can expect in the next couple of years. Very young and talented club. Hey, maybe that door, or the festival, or whatever. Let's here, a little over 51,000. We should fill up the stadium. There were a few tickets left in the last couple of days, but I would imagine with the walk-up crowd, those will get eaten up very quickly. The Buffs for the last time at home this season, gathering in midfield. One more cheer. The seven seniors in the middle of the pack. And don't think that that team doesn't want to send those seniors out on a winning note at home. That's very, very important to the entire football team. Let's go back down to the field to Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks, guys. You, know, you were talking about the, the great season that John Hessler is having, and uh, of course, he's playing because Corey Detmer is injured. And you can see Corey Detmer right now. He's watching the game today from Rick Neuheisel's office. And this is because, uh, you know, Corey is a ring bunctious type of guy. You know that from the way he'd celebrate in the end zone all the time when the bus would score a touchdown. Well, the problem now is that uh, they think he's just being a little too anxious and too eager on this uh, bad knee of his. So they put him in a knee brace and told him to slow down. And they are basically ordering him to watch the game today from up in Rick Neuheisel's office so that he doesn't get into the celebration mode down here on the sidelines. So Coy is kind of like uh, been told to uh, relax and let that knee heal. And they're a little afraid that if he's down here, he might start getting nuts and celebrating with his teammates. So they got him uh, upstairs watching the ball game today. 
Now, it's funny you bring that up, Mark. Last week in Stillwater, I was watching from our telecast booth, and, and I saw Coy Detmer on the field throwing passes to his teammates. And then Rick Neuheisel came walking out. Coy saw him walking towards him, and Coy stopped throwing, as if he knew Rick would not be pleased to see that. Kicking off for the Buffs to start the game will be Jason Leslie, and back to receive it will be Randy Potter and Kenyatta Williams. Williams on the left, Potter on the right. CU won the coin toss and elected to kick off with the wind. And once again, this wind has got to be, well, I would say 30 to 40 miles an hour. You can tell the line drive hits the back of the end zone and will not be run back. So the Missouri Tigers struggling mightily on offense all year, averaging just over 15 points a game. We'll start with the ball, and their quarterback, a freshman. A freshman who doesn't necessarily throw the ball all that well, but he can run it. His name is Corby Jones. He has not thrown the ball more than nine times in any single game this year. And he is the first true freshman to start at quarterback for Missouri since 1977 when Phil Bradley was at the helm. Bradley, of course, a gentleman who went on to have a very fine Major League Baseball career. Missouri starts out on the ground. This is their leading rusher, Brock Olivo. And he is stopped quickly by linebacker Ron Murkerson, who is back in the starting lineup after sitting out last week with an ankle injury. The Missouri offense looks like this. Jones, the quarterback, Olivo, and Antoine Johnson, the running backs. The tight end is Lingerfeld, and a couple of freshmen at wide receiver, Young and Brooks. The offensive line, Beeble, Morris, Appel, Smith, and the 313-pounder, Chris Buck, at right tackle. It's a very small offensive line outside of Buck. Nobody more than 270 pounds. Second and 10 after no gain on the initial run. Flag goes up. Olivo might have picked up a yard. But it looked like a couple of buffs jumped the gun. CU defense, the front seven, Greg Jones having a spectacular season. Ryan Olson, Kerry Hicks, and Daryl Price. The linebackers are Phillips, Russell, and Murkerson. And the defensive backs are Wilkins, Donnelly, Amidi, the senior, Rosga, and the other senior back there, T.J. Cunningham. If you take a look at Corby Jones, uh, when you look at the Missouri offense, they really have struggled just to stay on the field. They are virtually last in every category in the Big Eight. Last in points. They're last in passing. They're second to last in rushing. That puts so much pressure on your defense. By the way, Missouri defensively is not a bad move. After the penalty, it's second and five for Mizzou. Olivo tries the middle again. He's a couple yards short of the first down. Olivo comes into the game with 759 yards rushing. He's a pretty good player. The co-freshman of the year last year in the Big Eight Conference on the offensive side of the football. A little bit faster than you might think. As you take a look, they have really struggled. They've struggled for the year, but especially on the road. Nebraska, Kansas, Kansas State, all away from Columbia. And now you add CU to that road schedule, you have your problems, even if you've got a good team. Five out of the last six teams Missouri has faced have been ranked. It's third and one. The fullback, Antoine Johnson, picks up the first down and a little more. He's up to his own 35. Matt Russell, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. Right, just a real quick trap play. Johnson gets behind the, the left guard who pulls. Anybody who has seen Colorado the last few weeks must think when they come into the game that they can run the ball. And I think CU's play on the defensive side of the football has given even subpar offensive teams a lot more confidence when they play the bus. On first down, again, the Buffs defensive line a little antsy. Olivo thrown for a one-yard loss, but you might be able to tack a few more yards onto it if this penalty is against CU. Second time we've seen that Missouri, excuse me, Colorado jumps, and you can see the fullback also moved, Antoine Johnson. This penalty will go against the Buffs once again. He says, penalty, five yards. And David, a, uh, a dubious distinction for the CU team right now. 
with their second penalty of the afternoon. They have now tied the Big 8 Conference record for penalties in one season. They've been flagged 89 times. And that's a record that Rick Neuheisel certainly did not want, and, and also uh, a feat that he knows this team is going to get better. And not only the rest of the remaining teams, but next year and the year after, they've got to cut down. There's way too many silly penalties this year for the Bucks. Antoine Johnson picks up a couple of yards, so that'll bring up third and three. Well, you can see what the wind is doing to some of our camera positions. We try and take a shot of Rick Neuheisel on the sideline. We are shaking all over the place. On second and three. Missouri in its own 42-yard line. It's got to be a running play to tie it in. Now, this one's going to be on Missouri. Interesting that they changed the formation, moved the tight end to the slot side, and thus you cannot throw the ball out of that formation. Mike Morris, the left guard, moved early. Take a look at the left guard, left side of your screen. Trying to get out a little early. Those guards who pull like to get just a little bit head start. It hasn't been a very pretty first drive for the ball game. We've had three penalties so far. Two against CU, one against Missouri. So it's second and seven for the Tigers. They're now at their own 37. On the option. This is what Jones does best. He is across the 40 to the 42 before Mike Phillips stops it. Missouri trying to run the option for the two receiver side into the boundary. And Jones, of course, as we've been telling you, a freshman, a true freshman, does a nice job of just hitting that crease. You expect him to get better the next couple of years. He really is an excellent running quarterback. He gives Missouri a threat that they have not had in terms of running the football from that position. The tight end changes again to this side. It's got to be a run. Third and three. Jones rolls out. Incomplete, the intended receiver was the freshman Martez Young, right in the letters, but couldn't hold on. Let me correct something I said. They, they, uh, number 71, Chris Buck, was lined up as a tight end with three tackles to the right side, so obviously Missouri could pass. Nice play by T.J. Cunningham out of Overland High School. It's a good break in the football and prevents the completion. Back to front for Missouri is Jason Smith. He averages 37 yards a kick, and this is Steve Rosga calling for the fair catch at his own 19-yard line. We've got 10.35 left in the first quarter, no score. And the Buffs come out on offense, led by John Hessler, the quarterback who threw for five touchdowns last week against Oklahoma State on the year. A little over 1,600 yards thrown. A CU school record, 16 touchdown passes and only five interceptions. Hey, speaking of school records, when you add in what Corey Detmer has done, they now have 23, which breaks the old Big 8 record. But right now, Kansas State also with 23 touchdown passes this year. That thing might be decided next week in Manhattan. Bob's the first and 10 at their own 19. First time they've touched the ball today. Hessler going deep. He's looking for James Kidd, and a flag is down. Clayton Baker was the defensive back covering Kidd. Well, Baker will try to jam Kidd, and that's a very, very tough proposition. James Kidd with exceptional speed does a nice job of creating the contact with that left arm. You can see, again, Baker over the top and the win taking that football almost to the boundary. That's a 15-yard penalty, defensive interference on Missouri. So the ball now placed at the CU 34. And an automatic first down. Phil Savoy not in the starting lineup for the Buffs today. Suspended for one game for unspecified reasons. He violated team rules. And up the middle goes Herschel Trotman. A six-yard jump stopped by Bo Adams. Here is that starting unit for CU on, on offense. Hessler, the quarterback, Trotman, the running back. Lepsis, who scored his first touchdown in a CU uniform, the tight end. 
The wide receivers are Carruth, Kidd, and Chris Anderson filling in for the suspended Savoy. The offensive line, Welsh filling in for the injured Kyle Smith, along with Irwin, Stoltenberg, Nioli, and Melvin Thomas. Second and five. Hester wants to throw again. Wide open, Lexus over the middle. Deep into Missouri territory and finally down at the 32-yard line by Bo Adams once again. Colorado's done a nice job this entire year. Both Detmer and now Hessler, a play-action fake. You can see as he rides Troutman in the line and then puts that ball in his stomach, it just gives the defense one more second of confusion. They're not exactly sure as to if the ball was given off or not. Hessler, again, the nice play fake. Lepsis from left to right is all by himself. Matt Lepsis has had himself a solid year catching the football. That's number 21, I believe. 26-yard pickup for big tight end. See you on first down. Drop it. Wriggles his way inside the 30. DeMonte Cross the stop. And when you see uh, number 88 catch the ball for CU, do you have flashbacks to your own playing days? <laughs> well, that's that's a long time ago, but uh, you were you were 88, year, correct? Yes, yes. You talk about balance in the team. We mentioned Phil Savoy now playing today. He had 45 catches. Caruso got 43. Lepsis now with 21. Chris Anderson with 17. So they really spread the ball around last night. Drop it inside the 25, very close to the first down. Here's that Missouri defense. They play a 5-2, five, five men up front. Budgets, middle stats, Steve Martin, their leading sack man, Pat Ivey and Justin Wyatt. The two linebackers are Chapman and Love, and the DBs are Chris Adams, a good one in Devonnie Cross and Clayton Baker. Baker leading the team, along with Bo Adams with three interceptions. This is Troutman. Again, close to the first down. Well, I think he's short, though. If he doesn't make it, they're looking at fourth down. Yes, it is fourth down. And about a half yard to go. Buffs keep the offense on the field. Looks like they're going to go for it. They're down to the Missouri 24. It's fourth and one. Troutman again. This time he has it. Pushes his way to the 21. Steve Martin makes the stop. Well, they run the ISO, and it's a very difficult play to stop for less than a yard if you have a back that has good vision. And that time, Troutman doesn't force it right up into the intended hole, but cuts it back to the soft spot. And picks up the first down. Herschel Troutman is going to be a guy the next couple of years. I think you'll see, along with the other two backs, Henry and Barnes, really get the football that much more. Messler with five men going out for the pass. He's looking for Kidd. He's got him. No. Dropped as he crossed the goal line. Would have been a heck of a catch if he held on. I'll tell you what, it was a heck of a throw. Kidd and Kidd and Carruth to the right just cross in their patterns, and John Hessler put this thing right on the money. James Kidd lays out, can't come up with the football. So far, Hessler in this win has been extremely accurate. Good protection. Watch where this thing comes down. Almost a great one. Can't get much better than that on the throw. On second and 10, Troutman down to the 18-yard line. And Damani Cross, the tackle. Tell you what, it's kind of nice to have a 205, 210 pound free safety. Watch how quickly Rochelle Troutman stops when Damani Cross gets there. This looked like it might pop for a long gainer. That's a big safety. And he is a hitter, their leading tackler with 11 and a half a game. He's also forced three fumbles. You can understand why. Again, no running backs behind Hessler as Troutman lines up wide. From behind, he fumbles. Recovered by CU. Hessler hit from behind by the defensive end, Justin Watt. 
Well, you'll see from the right side, he's got Ray Carruth crossing. See if we can see him right there. And I don't think John Hessler ever saw him or Carruth was not in the pattern progression, but good backside pressure from Missouri and now a long field goal attempt by Colorado. Andrew Welsh, by the way, on the recovery. Boscarichian lines up for a 44-yard field goal attempt. He's perfect from 40 to 49 yards. He's two for two. And on the year, he's a very impressive 10 for 12. With the win behind him. Boscarichian, no good. A little short and a bit to the right. So the Buffs on their first drive fall short. We're still at zeros with 5.50 to go in the first quarter. Zero, 0 at Folsom Field. We've got 5.50 to go first quarter. Each team has had the ball once. It's Missouri's turn once again. It's first down at their own 27. Jones throwing and complete. The receiver was Martez Young. He picks up about five yards. Let's go down to the field, Mark McIntosh. Thanks a lot, Les. You know, Neil Voskerichin's got to think that the uh, kicking gods are not with him today. The wind normally today has been blowing very strongly from the north to the south, but just seconds before Voskerichin got ready to kick that ball, it switched to the south and was blowing very strongly when he tried to kick that field goal. So he was actually kicking into the wind, and would you know it, now the wind's blowing again from the north. It's going to be that way all day. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. Second and six for Mizzou. Buffs really have it stacked on the line on defense. They're looking for the run, and they get it. This is Brock Olivo. Picks up a couple of yards. Ryan Olson and Matt Russell both in on the tackle. There's a guy that's had a heck of a year. Matt Russell, who will be back this year, or, or next year, I should say, about 12 tackles per game really solidifies the Buffs inside. Prototypical middle linebacker. He's a guy that I, you, you just you get the impression he thinks, he eats, he sleeps, he breathes football. And that's what you have to have to play that position. Yeah, you know it was like that at home. His dad played for Baylor, his brother at Arkansas. And another good stop by Russell. That'll bring up fourth down. Well, Matt Russell is to Olivo about the time Brock gets the football. And there's no place to run. Once again, Mark Norris on the punt. Excuse me, Jason Smith on the punt. Almost blocked. In fact, it might have been tipped. And that ball goes out of bounds at the CU 44-yard line. I think Maurice Enriquez might have gotten a fingertip on that ball. I tell you what, it looked like the referee said, no, the ball wasn't blocked, but there was contact on the punter. So, interesting call. We'll take a break after the 26-yard punt. See you will have the ball, 0-0. We have a scoreless game in part because both offenses have been hampered somewhat by the win. CU has had the best shot at, at scoring, putting some points on the board, but Neil Voskarichian couldn't convert a 44-yard field goal. Hessler on first down, finds Ray Carruth, and he is across midfield, down to the Missouri 46-yard line. Kevin Ford the stop. Well, in this offense, you want to try to get the football as quickly as you can to those that can make things happen. You can see John Hessler a little bit behind Ray Carruth, but a very easy pattern, simple, doesn't take long to throw. Ray Carruth from left to right, getting the ball and let him create with that tremendous speed. And he certainly can create. He leads the Big Eight in yards per game receiving with just under 99. First down for the Buffs, they're at the Missouri 46. Hessler looking again. This time he finds Kidd. Just short of the first down, the Buffs down to the 32-yard line. Again, we talked about the protection. For the most part this year, Colorado quarterbacks have been able to stand in the pocket and wait for a receiver to get open. Excellent job up front by that offensive line. Second and one. They take the reverse. Hessler looking deep. Looking for Carruth. That gets caught up in the wind, and it's intercepted. 
picked off by Calvin off Easter. Another of those Missouri freshmen, and that's his second interception of the season. I tell you, even if the ball had not been thrown into the wind, there's just no place to fit that football in. They try to run the fake reverse, hoping that the free safety will bite an Eastler. You'll see from the left side of your screen, is directly in the middle of the field. You're not going to be able to throw that ball over the top unless the free safety comes out of center field, and Eastler played it perfectly. You can see Eastler left side of your screen, and the wind really affected that pass. And Carruth saw it was hung up there and tried to make the adjustment and come back for it. But Caldron off Easter was there before him. So Missouri with the ball at its own 13. This is Olivo, and he's tripped up across the 15 by Ron Murkerson. Brock Olivo is out of Washington, Missouri. He's just a sophomore and a very talented one. Against Northeast Louisiana this year, he ran for 222 yards. And when your offense is, is struggling and you really can't throw the ball much, you've got to have somebody step up and pick up a few yards for you. Missouri very ground-oriented this year. Second and seven. On the option, Jones pitches. This is Olivo. Nowhere to go, though. And on his back quickly is the defensive guard, Ryan Olson. Boy, dangerous. I, I don't know if the wind affected the pitch or not, even on the option, but Olivo had a difficult time gathering that thing in a little bit behind him, and Brock looked like he had to check the print on the ball before he started to run once again. Option is such a precise play. You've got to catch it and be going 100 miles an hour if you have to slow down at all. It usually doesn't work. Olivo was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so it's third and seven. Missouri at its own 16-yard line. On the blitz, Jones rolling out. He'll keep it. Ooh, and really cracked out of bounds by Alan Wilbon, the CU linebacker. Jones showing you a pretty good ability to run the football. And again, the rollout designed to buy him some time. Gets away from pressure inside by Colorado. It's a good job here picking up the first down he pays for, it too. Excellent hit that time by Ryan Black. But Missouri first down. Tigers at the run 24. This is the fullback, Antoine Johnson. He's up to the 29. Ryan Olson, the tackle. Missouri comes into this game with a 2 and 7 record. In conference, however, 0 oh and 5. Their only two wins have come against teams that just entered Division I play, North Texas and Northeast Louisiana. I'll tell you what, if they don't win today, they'll be winless in conference play, first time since 1971. And second and five, Jones. This was designed for him to run it. He was very close to the first down. Might be a fumble. Usually when officials don't point right away, it means the offense retains the football. This is a quarterback draw running behind the lead back. Ball looked like it was out. Looked like Kerry Hicks stripped him, and he lost the ball just before he hit the ground, but that's not the way the officials saw it. There's a timeout on the field right now with two seconds to go. Oh, excuse me. The quarter is ending. The quarter has ended, and we are scoreless. Missouri and CU, 0-0. Zero, zero. We're back at Folsom Field in Boulder. You see a shot of the Dell Ward Center at the north end of the field, and you also see the score. There isn't one, actually, as Dave and I get ready to start the second quarter with you. Missouri has the ball at its own 33-yard line. It's third and one. Jones on the sneak. Looks like he has it. So 
First quarter stats for you. Not much to talk about there. Just a total of 108 yards between the two teams. The only turnover, a CU interception. John Hessler put it up in the win. Keldernoff Easter came down with it for Missouri. They're going to measure. And Mizzou does have the first down. At their own 34 and a half yard line. Dave, you think Rick Neuheisel right now a little worried that his team uh, might have come out the same way they did against Kansas a few weeks ago, a, a bit listless? Well, I, I think you always worry when you're not ahead in a game that you feel like you should win comfortably, but still a lot of time left in this game. Looks like Missouri came off the ball a little too soon right there. What we had there was a failure to communicate. Ball, false start offense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Still shaking the bush, boss. <laughs> So Corby Jones and his offense will be staring at a first and 15. Back at their own 29. This is Olivo. He trips on the turf before anybody hits him. Matt Russell and Kerry Hicks were the first black jerseys to tag him down. I think he lost a yard on that play. Really no place to run. That time, Kerry Hicks did a good job on uh, on the guard, Chris Barrows, and just stuffed the play. And by the time Olivo got to the line of scrimmage, there was nothing there. Longer you let a team like Missouri hang around, however, they start to get excited. They start to get some energy in, in, in that huddle. And right now, we're in the second quarter of a scoreless game, and I'm sure Missouri is feeling pretty good about themselves. Second and 16 for the Tigers. Corby Jones wants a timeout. That's the first timeout taken this half, and we'll take one also. We'll come back. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you at Folsom Field. That's not a special effect, folks. The wind is whipping down the plane. Grocery bags, popcorn boxes, styrofoam hats all over the field today. This is Brock Olivo on second and 16. Gary Hicks and Ryan Olson, two defensive linemen make the stop. That'll bring up third and 14 for Missouri. We've been pretty lucky all year, actually, as far as weather goes for these CU games. Oh man away. Worst conditions probably at Iowa State in Ames, Iowa, where the wind was whipping pretty good there, too. And we certainly have seen it worse in Ames over the years in terms of precipitation. I would say minus 30 degrees two years ago was certainly this. On the pitch, Oliva hit quickly. Missouri went nowhere on that drive. It'll bring up fourth and long. Ryan Black makes the initial hit on Oliva. And Corby Jones walked directly over the coaching staff with his palms raised skyward as if to say, well, I did make the right play, didn't I? That time, the blitz forces Jones to pitch a little bit before he wants to, and Black is right there. I know Corby Jones ran Holy the option offense. The penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. Corby Jones, the Missouri quarterback, ran the option in high school. Uh, I just haven't been very impressed with his proficiency today. Well, well one of the problems is you're playing a very quick defense, and it, it, you can't throw the football very well. Then when they get you in third and long, they put too many people up in the box for you to block in, in an option attack. Jason Smith, an end over end punt. Rosga chooses to run it back, and he has a little room. Finally brought down at his own 43. A little scuffling going on in the field. Mark Allnut made the tackle. I'll tell you what, the CU band had their hats before the game. They were flying all over the place. I, mean, I, bet, I bet everybody's got everybody else's hat on. 
was a 41-yard punt. And a return by Rosga of nine yards. 12.34 to go in the first half. We are scoreless. John Hessler on the day is thrown for 46 yards and one interception. This is London Henry, his first carry of the afternoon, and he slices up to his own 47, call it a gain of five, before Kay Blake makes the stop. Nice way to describe it, too. Lyndon Henry is, is much more of a slashing kind of running back than Herschel Travel. You'll see him stretch the bounce play to watch the cutback ability. He slices inside a couple of attempts of tackles. Six-foot sophomore out of Port Arthur, Texas, came into the game with 359 yards rushing. And second and five, Henry again. Picks up another four. He's a yard short of the first down, just past midfield. Steve Martin the stop. Again, behind that big offensive line, you can see Heath Irwin and Ryan Stoltenberg getting a good push on the left side. Lyndon Henry just burrowing in behind him. 34-year-old Rick Neuheisel. He can become the first rookie coach at CU to take his team to a bowl game. I think he's pretty much assured of that. Lyndon Henry, very close to the first down. DeMonte Cross the stuff. I'll tell you what, if he gets this first down, it's because of tremendous second effort by Lyndon Henry. Good job by DeMonte Cross. Wait and look and see where he is hit. You can see, now watch the push, the leg strength to drive ahead. Judging from that mark, I think he's got the first down. I do too. They're going to measure it anyway. I think he's got it by about a foot. I might be losing my hair, but I still have my eyesight. I was going to say a Sasquatch foot, maybe, but a foot nevertheless. So it's a first down for CU at the Missouri 47-yard line. So I think under normal conditions, this would be the point in the field, and especially in first down, where you probably see Colorado try to get the ball down the field with some sort of play action. It's going to be difficult to throw long, however, because there is that stiff wind in CU's face right now. Flags down, and the flags won't even stay in one place. Starts, offense, five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, the Buffs have just broken the Big 8 record for penalties in a season with 90. And I would guess, Dave, that that has as much to do with a young team as anything else. If you're a lip reader, you can see Rick Neuhaus will say, who was that on? And then you probably don't want to watch the rest of what he had to say. If you're a lip reader, you're blushing right now. Hessler tries to do the quick slant to Matt Lepsis, and that falls incomplete. So you've got a hot read. They bring people from the secondary. At that time, Hessler expected Matt Lepsis to break it a little bit more toward the middle, and Lepsis kind of heading up the field right side of your screen, you'll see both linebackers, and here's the safety as well. You don't need really to square that thing off. If you're one of the hot receivers, once you get inside, just a quick stick move, and you've got to get to the middle of the field. By hot receiver, you mean the one intended uh, the pass to get to. Absolutely. The guy, the guy when the defense brings too many people to block and you want to dump the ball to him. On second and 15, they try to slant from the other side. Are they going to call this incomplete or a fumble? I think they're calling it a fumble, a catch and a fumble. Yeah, there, was, there was no call immediately of an incomplete pass, so this actually will gain yards. And again, speed across the middle. Ray Carruth. Now I think they're, are they going to bring it back? I'm a little confused. That where they're placing the ball right now is is in between where Carruth caught it and the ball went out of bounds. Well, we'll call that a politically correct call. <laughs> Straddling the fence. So call it a completion to Carruth. 
And the Bucs have third and eight at the Missouri 45-yard line. And once again. And again, the slant, this time Chris Anderson. Oh, if he could have stayed on his feet, he had the end zone. Instead, he's brought down at the 30-yard line by Clayton Baker and another CU first down. I tell you what, he's been a big play receiver. This is the 10th time they've thrown the ball to Chris Anderson on third downs this year and the 10th time that Colorado's had a first down because of the throw. Chris Anderson, a big, strong wide receiver. And you can see 17 catches on the year. Clayton Baker had a tough time getting him to the turf. Chris Anderson starting today in place of the suspended Phil Savoy. He gains the first down. London Henry pushes the pile inside the 25. Talk about brute strength. The old counter tray play, and most times you're taught to read the block or the blocking of the two linemen who pull. That time Lyndon Henry said, to heck with this. I'll just get down behind him and get what I can get. Take a look, left guard, left tackle, both pull. Henry just runs, actually runs away from most of the blocks. Andrew Welsh at left tackle. Matt Leftis jumps offside. Well, there is no rhythm to this football game at all. Maybe we should play some music over the PA system. Okay. Dead ball, false start offense, five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Another one against CU. That'll bring up second and nine. Again, the Buffs going into the win. We've got 9.20 to go, first half. Scoreless tie. Henry. Might have squeaked a yard, maybe two out of it. Tim Middlestead, the first man to hit him. Brings up third and eight. Final home game of the year for CU. You see the pylons, the bright orange markers on the goal line. They can't even stand up in this win. Hessler wants to throw. Has his man Kidd for the first down and inside the Missouri 20-yard line. Deldron off Easter, the tackle. Colorado empties the backfield, and again, Kidd for the right side is all by himself when they put Lyndon Henry in motion, Missouri adjusted. You can see Kidd, the middle of the three receivers, just runs a little smash route, and he is all by himself. James Kidd with two catches today for 18 yards. And the Buffs with a first down. Lyndon Henry. Hit at the line of scrimmage by DeMonte Cross. Well, he had a game last week against Kansas. 15 tackles. And he knows how to, how to defense the CU uh, team also. Last year against the Buffs, 18 tackles. Well, they, they use him so much in the, uh, in the running game. As a free safety. When you're up close to the line of scrimmage, you're going to make some tackles because you're on a cannon for in that running game by the offense. Second and ten. Hessler on the play action. Escapes one rusher. Over the middle, complete the kid. Down to the two-yard line. Great patience by Hessler. And Kidd makes his third catch of the afternoon. I tell you, good job by John Hessler. Again, as he avoids the sack, it looks like the play might be down. And also an excellent job by James Kidd of making himself available to a quarterback in trouble. He can come back to the quarterback and just get himself in position, get himself into a lane where that quarterback can see it. James Kidd, I can guarantee you, was not the primary nor the secondary receiver in that play. But he continues to work himself into a position where John Hessler can see him. Buffs offense leads the Big 8 in passing. It's first and goal at the 1. Hessler with time again, wide open, lets his touchdown see you. Boy, 
you talk about it working just the way you drew it up. Lapsus on the left side of your screen. They fake the ISO to the left. And you can see the back of the end zone. That's where you teach that receiver to be. And he is. First points of the day for either team. And now Boscarichian lining up for the extra point. And halfway through the second quarter, we finally have a score. It's CU 7 and Missouri nothing. Not a lot of smiling faces here at Folsom Field after the Buffs put up their first touchdown of the afternoon. Hessler to Matt Lepsis for the score. And now Jason Leslie will kick off. Navholt's holding it because of that win. Randy Potter and Kenyatta Williams is back there. The man on the left is Williams. He's the dangerous one, averaging 21 yards a kickoff return. <laughs> Leslie gets his foot into it, halfway through the end zone, and Potter decides to touch it down. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. Well, all the action will go left. John Hessler, again, the nice play fake with the ball in his stomach. Got a receiver on the first level outside, and then Matt Lepsis comes from left to right, right on the end line, the back of the end zone. And a pretty good scoring drive by Colorado, 12 plays, 58 yards. It took them a bit longer than we have seen this year, 5 minutes and 32 seconds, but John Hessler, his 17th touchdown pass of the year, this one to Matt Lepsis. And now Corby Jones and the Missouri offense on the field. Jones hasn't done much in the passing game. But he has the wind behind him on this drive. And he'll come out throwing. The intended receiver was the fullback Antoine Johnson. It's incomplete. See, the problem when you really have difficulty throwing the football and you attempt to get some sort of play action on first down, you come up with second and long, and, and what you do basically is run the ball. So teams that don't throw it well really put themselves in a bind. It's kind of a double-edged sword. You need to throw it a little bit early to be successful, but if you don't complete them, then you're really in a hole. And this young man has not been very successful throwing it, just 36% on the year. He's looking at second and 10. See, now you're looking third about eight and a half. The give was to another fullback, Ron James, and Terry Hicks makes the stop quickly. Now you're exactly where you don't want to be against the CU defense if you're Missouri. Third down and long, you know you get a, some sort of stunt package. They probably bring people up in the line of scrimmage because they expect you to run the ball and they force you to think about throwing the ball. Yeah, to give you an idea how much this Missouri offense has struggled this year, they've scored just 17 touchdowns in nine games. That's less than two touchdowns a game. On third and eight, Missouri at its own 22. Good rush put on. Jones gets rid of it for first down yardage. Rosga makes the tackle on Rosette New Jenkins. I tell you, pretty good throw there. Corby Jones will roll to his left. He's already trying to buy himself some time against this rush. Steps up in the pocket, squares his shoulders, and throws a dart. Jenkins was a darn good receiver for Missouri last year. He caught 40 passes, but he's had some off-the-field problems. And for a while there, he was suspended from the team. You saw the talent there. First and 10. On the roll. A penalty flag is down, and Jones just dumps it out of bounds. I think Missouri may have had two men moving at one time. The tight end reset, then a receiver went in motion, let's see. Putting on the good rush were Greg Jones and Kerry Hicks, forcing Jones to dump it. Illegal shift, two minute motion, five yard penalty, repeat first down. So the Buffs take the penalty, which will send Missouri back five yards. It'll bring up first and 15. How about that score in, uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, huh? 
The Wolverines leading Purdue five to nothing in the fourth quarter. Five to nothing. <laughs> but we understand Purdue has the bases loaded with one out. <laughs> Mizzou to tongue 27. <laughs> Tell you what, that ball was handed off just before Kerry Hicks put the hit on the quarterback, Corby Jones. I've never seen a guy get in the backfield so quick. Not, neither is Corby Jones, to tell you the truth. You take a look. Hicks almost <laughs> takes the handoff. Now, if that's not a play that is called for Ron James to get the ball, you can see Kerry Hicks is going to have a sack. We've got an injured buff on the field. It's Ron Merkerson, the linebacker, who's been out with an ankle injury. There is a timeout on the field, and we're going to take a break. 7 and nothing. see you. Some instruction on the CU sideline from offensive line coach Terry Lewis. However, Missouri has the ball right now, second and 13. The Tigers at their own 29-yard line, down by a touchdown. That's Jenkins in motion. And the give goes to Kenyatta Williams. Second and long, they pick up about three yards. You see, Kenyatta Williams does a nice job, again, in an obvious passing situation of just kind of finding that area and burrowing ahead. Williams out of St. Louis Mo. A lot of these kids out of the St. Louis area staying home. The quarterback, Corby Jones, is a hometown kid from Columbia Mo, where the University of Missouri is located. On third and seven, Jones rolling out. He was looking for Jay Murchison, incomplete, but we have a penalty flag down him. Well, the call goes against CU, defensive holding. Well, I'll tell you, that's going to be a, a first down, too. First down. That's the kind of play that just kills you. Now, I know Rick Neuheisel is not pleased with what's happened this year with respect to penalties, and that's something he's going to have to address continuously as they get ready for next year. You just, you just cannot give teams second and third opportunities and expect to be the kind of team that I know he wants to have here. And if you're just joining us, CU has broken the Big 8 record for penalties in a season. On first down, the option. This is Williams. He gets across midfield to the CU 47-yard line before Steve Rosga makes the stop. First time we've seen this afternoon that Missouri really runs the option to perfection. You can see Jones brings it to Jones and then pitches and nice move here. As Williams, the nice little shake, picks up an additional three or four yards. Now you're in a situation where you don't mind. You're a running team second and two. You've got two downs to pick it up. At the CU 47. Williams again. Very close to the first down. He's at the 45. Greg Jones, first man to hit him. Williams is a transfer from Indiana University. He sat out last year after transferring. So this is his first action as a Missouri Tiger this year. And we'll get another measurement. Shane Gang's been busy today. About two inches short of the first down. So that'll bring up third and one for Mizzou. Third and 
funny about this Missouri offense. It's run 30, 31 more plays than the opposition this year, but it's gained 600 fewer yards. All they need is one right here. On the sneak, it's Jones. Looks like he has it. Yes, he does. Didn't get much, then again, didn't need much. Just try to get as low as your offensive lineman. You see Jones, pretty good job of just getting down behind those big folks up front, trying to pry the ball out of his hands. A decent job by a Missouri offensive line that's not very big. Across the front, they go 253, 277, 255, 269, and then there's the right tackle, Chris Buck, who is 313. Jones in the flat to his tight end, Lingerfeld, and he falls down at the 40-yard line. Call it a gain of five. T.J. Cunningham and Donnell Liamidi the tackle. Bill Lingerfeld, the junior out of Kansas City. His 12th catch of the year. Second and five. Papers flying all over in that win. This is Williams. Couldn't get much going. He's down at about the line of scrimmage. Matt Russell, the tackle. Starting to wonder if there's something wrong with their leading rusher, Brock Oliva. We haven't seen him in the game the last couple of drives. Williams has been carrying most of the burden. You see, you see Williams looking over to the bench, kind of shaking his head. That's a look that says, Coach, there wasn't much there. He didn't do much with that. On third and six, for the first time today, this crowd comes to life. Jones incomplete. There was a miscommunication between himself and the running back, Kenyatta Williams, the intended receiver. Tell you what, he's got him wide open to Colorado again with the blitz. They don't get there, and they've been able to connect. Williams might have scored on that play. So a punting situation for Missouri. That's Jason Smith lined up at his own 45, punting to Rosga. Not a very good kick off the side of the foot. Let's see where they mark it. At the CU 18-yard line. So while the CU offense comes out onto the field, we'll take a break. It's 7-0 Buffs. Back at Folsom Field, a minute and a half to go in the first half. Landon Henry on the carry. And he is up to his own 41-yard line, a gain of 23. Well, the old cliche, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, I think applies to this particular play. Nice little cutback, and Landon Henry just does not go down. Runs over his own guys. Missouri's trying to grab the football. Port Arthur, Texas, the home of another great running back, and little Joe Washington from the University of Oklahoma. On first down, Hessler has his man. Karuk reaches back for it across midfield and down at the Missouri 40-yard line. We've got less than a minute to go in the half. But I tell you what, he is fast. Makes a nice adjustment on the ball thrown behind him, and all of a sudden just kind of squirts right through a couple of Missouri defenders. A 19-yard pickup. Missouri scrambling to get some defensive players off the field. They did not do it in time. Carruth, another reception. And a penalty flag on him. And Missouri recovered. I think it's coming back, though. DeMonte Cross is the one who recovered that fumble. Yeah, Missouri did not get the people off the field, but again, the, the speed of your receivers on crossing routes 
very dangerous. Repetition, Missouri. Penalty will be enforced by yards. Cross with the big hit. Carruth is still down, and that's a it's bad for Missouri because they turned him over right there. Take a look, Carruth running left to right. Cross will come up from the left side of your screen. Baker will grab him first, and then there's the big hit, which knocks the ball free. Damani Cross able to gather it in as well. Took a pretty good shot. CU will keep the ball. Coming up at halftime, Mark McIntosh will have a live interview with head coach Rick Neuheisel and hear Rick's thoughts about the first half. Mark also will have a chat with two members of the CU women's basketball team for a preview of what should be another winning season. And then we'll hear from Dirk Martin talking about the brightest new stars on the CU faculty. That's all at halftime. Buffs on first and five, keep it on the ground. Lendon Henry, about a yard short of the first down. Actually, they might have to measure for this. He's closer than I thought. Well, Buffs still have two timeouts left. I'm sure Rick Neuheisel is reminding John Hessler of that right now. But a nice little drive here right before halftime, at least to put him in position to get some more points on the board. 28 seconds left in the half. Buffs on the charge. They lead 7 to nothing. And they are saying he got the first down. So Buffs with new life at the Missouri 29. And it's been hard to tell all day because the wind's been swirling so much, but it does look like the wind is in their face right now. Blowing against the Buffs. Almost caught by Chris Anderson. Clayton Baker, the defender. Carruth leaving the field. He got banged up a couple of plays ago on the pass reception and fumble. So they'll take a look at him in the training room, give him a little extra time at halftime. Almost a great catch by Chris Anderson. Excellent move to get inside the bump and run. And the slant and throw a little bit too far. You can see he gets his fingertips on it and then almost a terrific grab. Well, if this was 20 years ago, he'd have had that stick them all over his fingers and the ball would have stuck probably. That's right. Stuff's illegal now, though, on every level. Second and 10 for the Buffs. The swing pass to Trotman. He is inside the 25 to the 23. Joe Love, the linebacker, makes the stop. I'll tell you, that's a great tackle by Joe Love because if he doesn't get there, that's a touchdown little swing pass to the back. You see Love, the linebacker, is locked on. It looks like he's locked on man coverage. If he doesn't run Troutman down right here, Troutman, if he cuts up inside the block of Melvin Thomas, is going to score. You see the linebacker just tracking him down. You hope that you don't get man coverage in that situation. The linebackers drop back in their zones. You can pick up significant yardage. That's the play, if you remember back to the CSU game, that Colorado went about 90 yards from their own uh, goal line with. New Heisel and Hessler talking about what to do on third and three with 15 seconds left in the half. The Buffs still have two timeouts left on the board. Missouri has one timeout left. Switch that. Colorado has one, Missouri has two. Fifteen seconds to go. Buffs facing a third and three. Complete to Lutzis. He is short of the first down, however. Devontae Cross hit him quickly.
Well, we thought when the Buffs uh, let go Christian Fourier to the NFL, they might have a problem at tight end, but Matt Lepsis has really stepped up to the plate. Well, don't forget to watch the Rick Neuheisel Show tomorrow night at 10.35. That's only on News 4. It's the new place for in-depth analysis and highlights of today's game. Our Mark McIntosh and the coach himself will also preview the Buffs' next game as they finish the regular season on the road against Kansas State. That's the Rick Neuheisel Show, Sunday nights at 10.35, right here on News 4. Your home for the CU Buffs. Eight seconds to go in the half. See you. Looking at fourth and two, has decided to go for the field goal. Neil Voskaritian comes out. He's 0 for 1 on the day in field goal attempts. This one will be a 39-yard kick into a swirling wind. I don't ever recall seeing this before, David, but at the goal post, they've got a couple of guys with long poles holding the goal post in place. Do they, do they only do that when CU is kicking or will they do that when Missouri is kicking? Well, they, actually, when Missouri is kicking, they go down and, and try to move it back and forth. And it makes it, 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 it's more of a challenge for the Missouri kicker than anything else. No, I, you know, with the wind blowing as hard as, hard as it is, um, I'm sure they want to have those things set. But I, I can't remember seeing something like that either at any level. It, it looks like one of those devices you use when you're playing billiards and you can't quite reach the cue ball. That would be a granny, I think. Is that what they call it? Yes. Played a lot of pool in your day, I think. I have not. <laughs> I always thought a granny was uh, your mother's mother. Well, that, that's true also. Oscar Ritchie in a 39-yard field goal attempt to try and give the Buffs a 10 0 lead going into the locker room. He cannot get it off. Missouri picks up the ball. And finally down at the 32-yard line as the clock expires. That is the end of the half. CU a heavy favorite in this game, leading just 7 to nothing. Oh, the snap is behind. I, he almost misses this ball. Oscar Ritchie did not get a good piece of the ball at all. The snap was behind Steve Rosga. And the Buffs come away at nothing. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much. This uh, wind makes the conditions out here very difficult. Absolutely. It's uh, something we're going to have to deal with. It's windy for both teams. But uh, I'm pleased with the way our defense is playing. We'll, we, we just go in there and uh, try to be more efficient on offense and hopefully put this thing away. How much does it alter your game plan offensively because of this wind? Well, uh, a great deal. You know, a lot of stuff that we practiced this week just isn't going to work with the swirling wind. But we uh, have enough left to hopefully to win the game. One thing I know is you might want to pull your hair out and have more penalties. One thing you were trying to avoid. Well, we got to cut that out. I'm going to go make a point about that right now. Coach Rick Neuheisel, you know, last week, really for the first time all year, Rick Neuheisel admitted when he went into the locker room at halftime, he got on his football team. And uh, you get the feeling we might have a similar type of pep talk at halftime for the Buffs. Uh, struggling offensively, it's very difficult in these win conditions. But as you guys have mentioned, they've now broken the Big 8 record for penalties in the season, uh, kind of stumbling through the first half. And that's not what they're looking for today after a couple of weeks of stumbling, actually almost a whole month of stumbling through the season. They were looking to come out with a concentrated effort today, and so far for the first 30 minutes, we really haven't seen that out of the box. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Coach Neuheisel. We'll take a break right now at Folsom Field. We'll come back with all the halftime for you. Getting ready for the second half kickoff, but first, let's take a look back to the first half. Some highlights and some stats for you. And really, there weren't many highlights, to tell you the truth, in a 7-0 game. This is a terrific job by James Kidd on a, receive, on a pattern that uh, saw him not the primary receiver. Kidd works himself back into the playing field, makes a great catch, which, which sets up the only touchdown in the first half. This is a nice play action fake by John Hessler. Matt Lepsis in the back of the end zone, right on the end line where you want him. Makes the catch, and the Buffs with a 7-0 lead. John Hessler able to, much like Coy Detmer, and much the way Rick Neuheisel would like, execute the play action fake. Really does a good job of hiding that football, which will freeze that defense just for a split second, and Lepsis with the catch. Right before halftime, Colorado had a chance to up the lead to 10, 
but the snap a little bit behind, and I don't know if the hold was good or not, but Neil Voskaritian could not get the ball off the turf, and thus the lead stood at seven. Seven to nothing, so you would assume not a lot of offense the first half, and you can tell right in the middle of that graphic total yards, we only have 250 yards combined, both schools. Bit of a sloppy first half, 10 penalties, each team with five. And Missouri held the ball for almost 17 of the 30 minutes. Missouri will kick off the second half. Doing the honors will be number 16, Mark Norris. And back to receive for the Buffs, Lendon Henry on your left and Herschel Trotman on your right. Last home game of the season for CU. They're trying to break a two-game losing streak here at Folsom Field. Henry with the ball at his own six-yard line. A big hole up the middle, and he is up to the 31. A return of about 25 yards. Some scores from around the rest of the Big Eight. Nebraska and Kansas, nothing there in the first quarter. Nebraska, 25-point favorite over the eighth-ranked team in the nation. Army leading Air Force down in Colorado Springs. That one for the Commander and Chiefs Trophy. Northwestern has come back to take a lead over Iowa in the fourth. Northwestern trying to stay undefeated in the Big Ten and earn its way to the Rose Bowl in a battle with Ohio State. This is Trotman. Devontae Cross makes the stop. Much the same as we saw in the first half. Devontae Cross, the free safety up involved in the running game. You see kind of an interesting final from Ann Arbor. 5 nothing Michigan. Kansas State getting warmed up for Colorado next week. Oklahoma State leading Oklahoma. That one is in Norman. And no score with Colorado State and Hawaii. That one in Fort Collins. Second and six for the Buffs. This is Trotman again. Close to the first down before Tim Middlestad stops him. And one more score for you. Florida State coming off that loss to Virginia. Is leading North Carolina 28-12 in the fourth. That was a shocker, wasn't it, last week? It was a fun game to watch the last part of that, uh, of that football game. It certainly was. Florida State at the time, the second ranked team in the nation. And at the end of the game, they were left standing at the half foot line. A loser to Virginia. Buffs pick up the first down. Herschel Trotman does it. Or being stopped by Calder Northeastern. I don't know. I think they're going to be real, real close on this one. You had me nervous there for a second, big guy. <laughs> John Hessler's numbers, 11 of 15, pretty good numbers, especially throwing into, uh, into difficult conditions. The wind, the one thing, really, in conditions like this, one thing that can disturb this passing game, you talk about bad weather and snow and rain, that's not the problem, but wind definitely is a problem for this offense. On first down, Hessler, the play action, dumps it off to the tight end, Tennyson McCarty. And he gets to the 48-yard line. Monte Cross hit him good. Nice job of poise here by John Hessler. He's got a deep post on his right side and a, what they call a bend-in from his left. Not enough time to set in the pocket and see it, and then just dumps the ball, Tennyson McCarty. As long as you can get something positive on the play, you're going to be just fine. But what a great catch he had against, uh, against Nebraska. Second, is second and four. That is only touchdown of the season against Texas A&M. Hessler on the run, keeping his eyes downfield, throws a wobbler. Well, that, that's got to be a flag, and I don't see any flags coming out. Intended 
receiver was Carruth, and just as he was going up for the ball, he got pushed in the back. John Hessler doesn't, again, have time really to set for this play, and Ray Carruth looks like the intended receiver got knocked down about five yards down the field. Now, Hessler buying himself some time here. The ball for Carruth, that's close. Kevin Ford does a nice job of closing on the, on the play. Chris Anderson open deep, but you're not ever going to get the ball with your quarterback scrambling around for his life by running away from the quarterback. Third and four for the Buffs now. They're at their own 48. And has to block down from behind by the defensive tackle, Pat Ivey. And you don't get away from that kid. He is the strongest tiger in the weight room. One of the few times that we've seen today that John Esler really forced from the pocket. Missouri, on this drive, has done a nice job of making step up and move around. You want that quarterback to be moving around to avoid the rush rather than looking downfield for the progression of that particular pattern. Andy Mitchell, this will be his first punt of the afternoon, into the wind also. Almost blocked. Clayton Baker lets it drop, and it takes a CU roll. So Missouri, down by a touchdown, will start with the ball at its own 19. And here's a look at the Big 8 standings. Nebraska still undefeated. At the top of the pile, Kansas State and Kansas tied for second place. Colorado at 3-2, and two, sitting in third place. And your AP top 10, Nebraska number one. Kansas State, Colorado, and Kansas all in there. So four Big 8 teams in the top 10. Very impressive. Oklahoma was in the top 25 until losing last week to Kansas. First down for Mizzou on the option. Jones keeps it. And the freshman picks up five yards. Steve Rosga the stop. There's Terry Lewis, the offensive line coach for the Buffs. Talking to his troops about that last series, I'm sure. That's a radical dog on stuff, okay? But he worked because they took out people. Got a good group to work with this year. Those three in the middle, especially. Stoltenberg, Irwin, and Chris Niola. On second and five, Antoine Johnson, the fullback. There's a lot of room there across midfield. Not fast enough, however, to get away from Donnell Liamini. Still, Antoine Johnson runs the ball down to the CU 26. And again, CU, watch inside. Both inside backers get caught inside with the blitz. And Johnson just hits that crease, and there is nobody there to stop him until Liam Meany just runs him down from behind. Russell gets caught inside. You can see Antoine Johnson on his way to a 50-yard gain. Liam Meany and Roska with pretty good speed to run him down. But that's a big back. Edison, Texas. You have some relatives there, don't you? Yes, my mother's hometown. First down for Mizzou at the CU 25. Jones, incomplete. The receiver was the freshman, Eddie Brooks, had the ball in his hands for a split second, but couldn't hold on. Just got word from the CU sideline, Ray Carruth will return despite a bruised shoulder. When Missouri's been able to complete a couple of passes, it's been with Jones moving out of the pocket. That's a pretty good close on the football by T.J. Cunningham. You got to expect with the running team, second and ten, about 85% of the time you get a run here. And we do get that. Brock Olivo back in the game for Missouri. Brings it inside the 20. He was shaken up in the first half some and was out of the ball game. Now he's back and a penalty flag is down. Olivo, their leading rusher, he has three games of more than 100 yards this year, including last week against Kansas when he went for 102. I think this is going to cost Missouri some yardage here. A little scuffling afterwards with Matt Russell and a couple of Missouri players. A 
Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Mac? Thank you, Lance. Uh, Brock Olivo was uh, nicked up a little in the first half, but the reason he was out for those couple of series had uh, nothing to do with injuries, but what it, Missouri wanted to do is go to a quicker back to give Colorado a different look defensively. They went with a faster back just to give the Buffs something else to think about, and so he is back in there now as they go more to their power attack. Back up to you guys. That penalty against Missouri pushes the ball back to the CU 33-yard line. It's third and 19. So a team that doesn't throw the ball very well has to put it in the air right here. But they don't. They keep it on the ground. Brock Olivo. What's the thinking there, David? Well, maybe just play for three and try to stay in a, in a close game. I don't know. They obviously don't throw the ball very well. But I think that's that's just playing for simply that, to, to remain close in this game. I think you have to try to play to win. That brings out the field goal kicker, Mark Norris. He'll be looking at a 47-yard field goal. He has yet to hit anything, anything over 39 yards. And it is into the wind. It's long enough, but it's far to the left. No good. So Missouri has yet to put any points on the board, and with 9.20 to go third quarter, the Buffs still up, 7-zip. 9.20 to go third quarter, Colorado still leads Missouri, but not by much, 7 nothing. Missouri just trying a 42-yard field goal. It was no good, so CU takes over at its own 29. This is Troutman. And with a defender on his back, Troutman gets it up to the 36. Gain of seven. Herschel came into the game averaging almost five yards a carry. And like Brock Olivo of Missouri, Herschel's top game this year was against Kansas. 108 yards. Second and three. Troutman again. A nice hole. He's across midfield and down to the Missouri 46-yard line. Easter the tackle. Troutman with a nice job on the counter play again. Both right guard and right tackle pull and Troutman Quite an excellent block by Melvin Thomas, able to get into the secondary. Now, as he starts to get a little bit older in his junior and se senior season, once he breaks the initial contain, he will look to start to make people miss. But here, he simply just tries to run right over the top of the last man available to stop the touchdown. Good job there. Again, another good hole. Oh, there was good. And he's inside the 25. See, now you know he's got that wiggle because he just made really the best tackle on the Missouri team, Damani Cross, miss in the open field. That's what coaches look for, I think, the most. Not the fact that he can get through the hole with, with good explosion. What does he do when he gets into the secondary? How does he make people miss? Watch the little shuffle right here. Just a nice little stutter step, and Cross cannot make the tackle. Excellent run by Herschel Troutman. He was crossed up, you might say. Herschel Troutman leading the drive downfield. Another first down. And again, it's her show. This time, no way. Kevin Ford, the first man to grab him around the ankle. Driving the ball carrier. Kevin Ford. A lot of feast and a little famine for Herschel Troutman on this drive. A couple of long runs and right there a loss of three. Second and 13. Now the sun's starting to shine, the wind dying down a bit. Hassler looking for two. Touchdown CU! Boy, 
heck of an adjustment on a ball that got caught in the wind, and hopefully we can see what the wind does to this pass. Hester puts it in pretty good position, but the, the ball just starts to flutter. The thing almost end over end when it gets to James Kidd, who turns all the way around and catches it in his hands. Terrific adjustment on a, on a well-thrown ball. Oscar Ritchie in the extra point. It's good. And see you with its second touchdown of the afternoon. Makes it 14 to nothing with 7.06 to go, third quarter. James Kidd, the junior out of Elk Grove, California, just caught his fourth touchdown pass of the season from John Hessler. And the Buffs have taken a 14 to nothing lead over Missouri. Tell you, for five foot eight, 160 pounds, he certainly plays big and fast. Leslie kicking off. This will be Randy Potter from his own four. Runs into his own man and then gets stacked up at the 20. Take a look at the pass again. John Hessler really puts it where he wants to. The only problem, the win will take a nice spiral and turn it in almost to a punt-like attempt. And James Kidd turns around, gets his hands up, fights off the defender, and makes an excellent catch, which caps the drive. You see five plays, 71 yards, and that's more like what we've seen Colorado accomplish this year as far as the time of possession and the scoring drive, 2-14. There were three plays of 20-plus yards in that drive. Keep catching two Herschel Trotman runs. So Missouri now with a little more of a deficit to look at. Going deep for Rosette New Jenkins, but Jones overthrows him. Corby Jones, a true freshman out of Columbia, Missouri. His father is an assistant coach on this team. His father is Curtis Jones, a running backs coach. Corby, a pretty good athlete, also wants to play baseball at Mizzou. On the afternoon, however, he is just three for eight. Second and ten. Play action. Good rush put on by Ziegler. Jones gets away and decides to run with it. And he is up to the 30-yard line. All in a gain of eight. Marcus Washington, the tackle. Pretty good job by Jones here again, the, the waggle play, and he gets outside. The, the initial couple of receivers are covered. And Jones does a nice job of just cutting back against the grain and then just getting as many yards as he possibly can. We've got to see you buff shaking up on the field. I think that's Donnell Lee immediate again. It is. This is not the way he wants to go out at Folsom Field. One of seven seniors on the team is Liam Eddy. While the training staff tends to him, we'll take a break. 6.29 to go, third quarter. Well, Danielle Liam Eddy gets hit, really, I think Ryan Black. Hits him right in the back of the helmet, and they both try to make the tackle on Jones. Walked off the field under his own power. Third and two for Mizzou, and it's on 30. This is Olavo, has the first down and a little more. He's across the 35. Making the stop with his defensive back, Kenny Wilkins. There's Donnell getting a look. You see left side of your screen, there's Black, and almost helmet to helmet. Well, Donnell suffered a pinched nerve back against Nebraska. I wonder if he re-aggravated that. Antoine Johnson, the fullback, skips his way up to the 44. A couple yards short of the first down, however. Ryan Block, Black, stop. Tay Missouri has been able to run the football a little bit here in the second half. Of course, uh, they had the 50-yard run by Jones. Now you're looking up second and two. Oh, 
24 is Mizzou. Antoine Johnson, cross midfield. Rosga stops him at the CU 46. Another first down for the Tigers. The quick give to the fullback is basically a, a dive play. He cuts back to the, the soft spot. And when you've got safeties making tackles on plays like that, you're not doing a good job up front. 14 and nothing. CU leads it. Approaching the five minute mark in the third quarter. Corby Jones, the freshman quarterback, at the helm for the Tigers. This is Olivo. A couple of yards on that play. Olivo's not just their leading rusher, he's also their leading receiver with 16 catches on the year. His dad played uh, pro football, a quarterback for the St. Louis Cardinals. Back when the Cardinals were in St. Louis. Hard to keep track of who's where these days. And sounds like there's more to come. Unfortunately. Yeah. Second and seven for Missouri. And it looks like the Tigers move down the line. Every time they get a little something going. Every time Mizzou gets a little something going, they seem to shoot themselves in the foot. Well, the last couple of weeks, Missouri, I'm sure, has played a little bit better by the standards that Larry Smith has said. They gave Kansas a game for about three quarters before losing 42-23. And prior week, uh, they lost to Missouri, excuse me, lost to Oklahoma. I think it was 13-9. So. I know you're judged in how many games you win, but when you take a program like this, and you're Larry Smith, you, you have to start somewhere. Second and 12. Intercepted by Wilkins. Are they saying you got to put in? Yes. See ball. They may have gone to this play once too often. The wag look in the misdirection, and what you want to try to get is receivers crossing the field. You can see them doing just that. Nobody open, and Jones just forces this football. And a heck of a job by Kenny Wilkins cutting in front of the receiver. And he's locked on the wide receiver the whole way. A good job of catching up to the play and making the interception. Jay Murchison, the receiver. The intended receiver, the ball a little bit behind him. When you throw it into the field, you got to have that ball out in front. First interception of the year for Kenny Wilkins, the junior out of Mesa, Arizona. That's right, him at linebacker in the spring. Put him, put him back at defensive back this fall. Looks like that's the place he should be. London Henry, one of us, first play from scrimmage. A couple of yards for London. That'll bring up second and eight. 320 to go, third quarter. Buffs lead it, 14 zip. John Hessler has two touchdown passes so far today. Gives him 18 for the year. That's a CU record. Lepsis. One of the men who caught the uh, touchdown pass, and he's driven out at his own 49. Another Buffs first down. Same kind of play that we saw Missouri run, of course, the misdirection. A little bit easier to make this throw when you've established the running game. And Hester does a good job of pulling up prior to getting to that defensive end and finding Matt Lipsis. Pat Ivey, the defensive end for Missouri, had a pretty good shot at Hessler, just couldn't come under control enough to make the play. 165 yards so far for Hessler today. This is Henry. Oh. Just as he was going down, he took a real smack in the back from DeMonte Cross. This kid hits hard. Well, he, he cleaned him up pretty good here. You can see Cross, the free safety, in the middle of the screen. We've got a running start at Lyndon Henry. 
we've got an injured, uh, that's another London. injured CU player. He took a good pop. That's why you do all those neck strengthening exercises during the week. Football players spend a lot of time on that stuff. The neck, one of the most vulnerable positions on the body, one of the few that is not padded. London coming off a little shaken up. 50 yards so far today. He's having a little trouble remembering all 50 right now, though. I'll bet, however, he'll remember those three. Probably. Second and seven. CU is at the Missouri 47-yard line. This is Marlon Barnes, his first carry today. It's a back to the line of scrimmage only. Brian Craycraft, the defensive end, makes the tackle. Hessler's done a great job stepping in for the injured Coy Detmer this year. As I said a few minutes ago, 18 touchdown passes so far this year. A school record. Can't ask for more than that from your second string quarterback. Hessler complete to Chris Anderson. And the Buffs are inside the Mizzou 40. And there's the third down man again. That makes it 10 times this year on third down they've thrown to Anderson. And 10 times they've come away with the first down, his second reception of the game. He's just too big, really, to bump him. 220 pounds, and although the position of Clayton Baker is pretty good, physically he just got overmatched on that play. Chris Anderson comes off a little shaken up. First down for the Buffs at the Mizzou 38. Barnes fumbles. A lot of white jerseys there, along with Marlon Barnes at the bottom of the pile. Let's see who's got it. They're trying to scrape everybody off of the pile to figure it out. And it is Missouri's ball. Well, Missouri gambling again, and Barnes was kind of a delayed handoff. Look who gets him. Damani Cross, the free safety. Knocks the ball free. Mark Alnut, the linebacker, I think, was the one that got to it. There's Alnut with the fumble recovery. So Missouri with the ball. And as you said, Dave, dangerously hanging around this game. Jones has some room to run. He's across midfield to the CU 49, a pickup of eight before Steve Rosga stops him. Word from the CU sideline, Donnell Liamidi, who came off with a stinger in the neck, has returned to the game. On second and two. Give us to the fullback, James, and he has a Missouri first down. Well, the weather's actually getting pretty nice here now. What we thought it would be uh, initially. Mid-50s, wind dying down some. There's Ron James, who just picked up the first down. And his nickname is Rhino. You just saw why. The CU 46 yard line. Looked like a broken play. Jones is able to grab a couple of yards out of it. Ron Murkerson is stopped. Winding down at the end of the third quarter. CU leading 14 to nothing. We'll take a break. Come back for the finale. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you to start the fourth quarter. CU leading Missouri. And 
Mark McIntosh with a special guest on the turf, Mark. Thank you very much, Les. We're here with John Beekner, the 18th president of the University of Colorado, and uh, we want to congratulate you on your, your new job. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you're not a newcomer whatsoever to the University of Colorado system. No, I've been here 32 years, and I missed uh, two home games in 32, and I'm sorry I missed those two. Can you name those two? Uh, Air Force and I think Cal Berkeley. Well, that's not bad. We were just talking here, an athletic person yourself. Well, I try to be. I keep uh, active with a little golf, a little fly fishing, some skiing, so forth. But I really appreciate uh, college athletics. And at CU, I think that we need to, uh, if we're going to do something, we ought to do, be the best at it. If, so I've always told people all the way from astrophysics to athletics, we ought to be the best. You take over the time where I think consensus building is something that's important to you here at the university. It's always important to have the, the public know that we're good stewards of their money, that this is their university, it's a public university, and public universities belong to all these people plus the people aren't here. You used to uh, teach at one time at Florida State, one of your students, Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds, yes, he was a, uh, sat in the back of the class, <laughs> and he rested a lot. Oh, well, he had a movie career ahead of him, you know, he couldn't spend too much time in academics. He had a great career. Thank you very much, and best of luck to you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Okay, John Beekner, the new president, 18th president, University of Colorado, he likes to play a little golf, played about a five handicap? <laughs> yeah, right, at 20. Okay, oh, what the heck, 25, but, uh, and we wish John nothing but the best since he's the 18th president of the University of Colorado. Back up to you, Les. Yeah, Mac, you can get a little Nassau going with him. Well, Missouri picked up a first down while we were talking to the president. They're now down to the CU 38-yard line, facing first and 15, also a penalty in the last couple of days. Jones on the option. Keeps it. Gets down to the CU 33. Mike Phillips, the linebacker, the stop. Show you some numbers through three quarters. CU has outgained Missouri by 100 yards and outpointed them by 14. 14 to nothing. We're just starting the fourth quarter. Play is stopped, flags down. Missouri's tried to up the tempo a little bit, getting out of the huddle and getting set, but they've jumped off sides two of the last three plays. Well, as we said, every time they get into CU territory, it seems. Ball start offense, five yard penalty, repeat second down. See, those are the kinds of mistakes that, that teams like Missouri are just unable to overcome. I mean, you have to play nearly perfect football. You take a look at the former Denver Bronco linebacker, Ricky Hunley. Not in the hat, but standing next to the gentleman in the hat. There's Ricky. Got a few recognizable names on the uh, coaching staff. Get into that in a second. On second and 15. Missouri wants to throw. And Jones is hit as he lets that ball go by Nick Ziegler. Incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. Excuse me, third down and one, third and 15. Well, along with Ricky Hunley on the sideline, another Missouri assistant coach is Eric Wright. Pretty good corner in his day. You bet I started as a rookie for a world championship team in San Francisco. Went to four Super Bowls with the 49ers. Third and 15. Jones throws the ball into the turf. A couple of yards in front of Rosette New Jenkins. He threw the ball into the turf, and that's about where he wound up, too. Ryan Black, from his safety spot, came backside and got to Jones just as he delivered the football. Take a look as they try to uh, protect for Corby Jones. There's the hit. I would imagine he's got a sore back. Not a bad route by Jenkins. The ball just a little bit underthrown because of the pressure. Jones still on the turf being looked at. 
Missouri does have a couple of experienced quarterbacks behind Jones. Kent score in Brandon Corso. Both have played significantly this year. Well, while Jones is getting looked at, I want to tell you Gary Miller in News 4 Sports continue an exciting new season on Broncos beat. It's tonight at 6.30 and then again at 11.05. That's a, fa that's a show if you're a Broncos fan you don't want to miss because it's the only Broncos show that looks ahead to tomorrow night's game against Philadelphia. It's all on Broncos beat tonight at 6.30 and then at 11.05 and it's all right here on News 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. Well, Jones comes out of the game. <laughs> and out comes the punting unit for Missouri. Jason Smith lined up at midfield. Steve Rosga back at the 10-yard line waiting for it. He lets it go. And that ball is down inside the five-yard line. Falling on it is Mark Alma. We'll take a break. 13 12 to go. Number seven for Missouri is Corby Jones, the quarterback, who just took a hellacious hit from Nick Ziegler. He's talking with a couple of coaches on the sideline, including his father, Curtis Jones, the running backs coach. And Missouri has. Kent Scornia warming up on the sideline now in case Jones can't come back. Meantime, see you with the ball from its own four-yard line starting the drive. Get back to the line of scrimmage on that running play. 14 and up. See you over Mizzou. We've got under 12.50 to go in this ballgame. Colorado probably will be very careful then here based on how Missouri has struggled to move the football. They've moved it decently, but certainly have not threatened the score, so you don't want to get a cheap one close to your end zone. That score has completed 75% of his passes today. Looking at second and 10 right here. Barnes again. He scoots it up to the 10-yard line. Gain of six. Joe Love the tackle. There's Jones, and Dave, the way it looks, Scornia might be coming into this ballgame replacing him. Well, he took a pretty good pop. That's his dad who he's talking with right now. Rick Neuheisel on the other sideline, wiping the sweat from his brow, because this game is a lot closer than anybody figured. Hesler, complete to Luxus. He has the first down. Dangerous pass, but made it work. Alden off Easter the stop. It's nice to have a nice big target in the middle of the field. This is the fake swing pass to the back, and Luxus just goes to the middle of the field and gathers it in for the first down. It's a big first down in this game, in that it moves you away from the end zone. Luxus, his fifth catch of the afternoon. Plus, now you can be a little more daring offensively. And work from the CU sideline, Lyndon Henry, the running back, has a slightly sprained right angle who might return. Time out on the field called by the Buffs. Hessler will make his way over the sideline to confer with the coaches. And we'll take a break with 11.26 to go. See you leading it 14-0. Folsom Field, uh, just a couple hundred tickets short of a sellout, but a lot of empty seats out here today, which is too bad considering C is the ninth-ranked team in the country. But then again, it has been snowing in the mountains, and a lot of these people, uh, a lot of CU fans probably up there on the fresh powder. One of the few times we've seen the option today from Colorado, John Hessler able to run this play a little bit bigger and certainly faster than Coy Detmer, but he takes a good shot right there from Kay Blake, the outside linebacker. I don't think Hessler saw him coming as he tried to dip up into that scene, but he certainly felt it. Picked up six yards on that play, brings up second and four. The Buffs at their own 22. We get to Barnes. Stays on his feet. Finally brought down at the 42 by Eric Douglas. 
But Marlon Barnes showing you why he figures in this trio of running backs looking for extensive playing time. Makes a nice cut right there and pulls away from the grasp and then strong enough that he can run through, almost through the tackle of Damani Cross, the free safety. Marlon picks up 21 yards on that play. Buff started this drive from their own four-yard line. And another injured player on the field. This is a Missouri Tiger. Looks like linebacker Joe Love. Junior out of Manor, Texas. Get a good idea here what linebackers see when they slide to the outside on a running play. Marlon Barnes, nice footwork inside. There's where Love gets hurt. And again, the cutback, and Damani Cross stops this from being even a bigger gain than it was. Love is up. Staggered a bit, however. Well, Gary Miller's Sports Extra is the place to be for extra Broncos coverage. Gary will have Jeff Campbell along with him this Saturday and Sunday night for a double dose of the best in sports. As always, the Sunday edition will feature a complete review of Sunday's Broncos-Eagles game. Join Gary and Jeff for Sports Extra Saturday nights at 1035 and Sunday nights at 1105 following the New Heisel Show. That's only on News 4, your home for sports. Rick Neuheisel earned a law degree from USC, and now he's facing a former coach at USC, Larry Smith, on the Missouri sideline. First down for the Buffs at their own 43. Play action. Hessler. Cross field. That's James Kidd. Yes, they say he did bring it off the turf for the catch. Down to the Missouri 42-yard line, and that's James' fifth catch this year. Here's a nice com game. complimentary look to what they've been running. The waggle, normally they roll to that side, and the receivers run left to right. This time he stops short and hits the receiver all the way back across the field. And you're right, that's a heck of a job of coming back to the ball and getting both hands under it before it hits the turf. In with 19 catches on the year, five today. And another first down for the Buffs. Marlon Barnes. First hit by DeMonte Cross and then sent flying out of bounds by the linebacker, Kevin Ford. Picks up three yards. You see both middle linebackers hand cross the free safety coming toward the line of scrimmage when the ball is snapped. And boy, Kevin Ford gives Marlon Barnes a shot before he gets out of bounds. Second and seven. That's look complete to McCarty. Well short of the first down, however. Calvernoff Easter there quickly to make the stop. That's McCarty's second catch today. Designed to catch Missouri again and that blitz inside. Pretty good job of closing to the football. McCarty picks up just a couple. That's Tennyson's second catch in the afternoon. Four for the Buffs. And a timeout on the field. Missouri will take it. So each team now with two timeouts left. We've got 9.02 to go in the ballgame. See you leading at 14 to nothing, and we'll come right back. Paid attendance today at Folsom Field. Just under a sellout, 50,645. However, only 40,000 people have shown up, so we've got 11,000 empty seats here today. See you. Tries to go to James Kidd, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. And the crowd wants the Buffs to go for it. They are well out of field goal range, but in Missouri territory.
And it looks like the Buffs will listen to the crowd and go for it on fourth and four. Three wide receivers lined up to Hessler's left, top of your screen. They run it to the other side. Hessler on the paper. Look at this. He's going to get in. Inside the 15, the 5. Touchdown, CU. Pretty good play away from the three receiver side, away from your trip side, because you know that you're going to have the majority of the secondary to the left. They run option right, and he gets a great block by Chris Naoli. John Hessner again, over 200 pounds, able to break a tackle on his way to the end zone. Take a look at the guard who pulls Chris Naoli, and Hessler follows him right there. Good block on. Kevin Ford and John Hessler is off to the races, a 36-yard touchdown run. Oscar Ritchie in the PAT. He's got it. See, he's got a 21 0 lead. John Hessler with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Pretty good day for the young man from Brighton. Two touchdown passes, one touchdown rushing. Signed with a couple autographs here as the game goes on. Hessler again, the spin option away from the three receiver side. Again, Naoli with a good block right there on Ford, the linebacker. Hessler runs through the arm tackle of Bo Adams, and then he is going to get himself into the end zone. Black shoes and all. Caught everybody by surprise. It's not a bad drive. No, not at all. Pretty good average. Almost 10 yards of play. Hessler, an all-state quarterback when he played at Brighton High. Also a pretty good baseball player. Just an all-around athlete. You saw that ability on that touchdown. Jason Wesley will kick off once again. Randy Potter and Kenyatta Williams back to receive it. Potter lets it go through the end zone. So with 8.48 to go, Missouri with the ball, down by three TDs. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC-TV and the Group W CBS television station partners. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC-TV and the Group W, CBS television station partners, is prohibited. In other words, don't do it, right? Don't do it. You just, you just don't want to do it. The zoo at the ball at its own 20. And a new quarterback in the game for the Tigers. That's Kent Scornia, a freshman redshirt out of Washington, Missouri. So they replace a true freshman with a redshirt freshman. And that pass floated up into no man's land and incomplete. Ryan Olson welcomed Scornia to the game. As you can see, Scornia has thrown the football more than Jones, but... Also, with a pretty good move inside, and Scorny just has to put that thing up before he goes down. He was lifted up in the air and go, whoa, Nelly. I mean, you don't want to come in and get sacked on your first play of the game. You also don't want to throw an interception. On second and ten. This is Olivo, and he's pushed up for a three-yard game. Olsen makes the stop. Well, you and I, right after this ball game, head for DIA and uh, Philadelphia. Looks like we're going to have a good tailwind behind us, too. Yeah, it might be an hour flight. <laughs> Broncos and Eagles tomorrow night. We'll have all the coverage for you at 5 and 10 on News 4. Third and seven for Mizzou. That was intended for Zachary Jenkins, but it kept floating and floating and floated right out of bounds. Of course, tomorrow night, that Broncos game, KOA Radio will have all the action live for you. Larry Zimmer and Dave will be in the booth. 
That's a game that Denver uh, has got to try to find a way to win. I, I think that's that could be the key to the rest of their season. They can get two games above 500 with a win against the Eagles, and I, I don't suspect that'll be an easy game. The Eagles coming off a tough loss Monday night against Dallas. And Mitchell fumbles the punt, still gets it off. That was Aldrich. Aldrich, or excuse me, Missouri punting the ball. My mistake. Jason Smith punting for Missouri. You, you, you boy, already, oh you've already gone to Philadelphia. <laughs> you left me. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, back to the Broncos. The new Mike Shanahan show can be seen every Monday night at 6.30 right here on News 4. Join the coach and me for an in-depth look at tomorrow night's game against Philadelphia. Mike will answer questions about what happened in the game. Plus, he'll use the Telestrator and illustrate why certain plays worked and why others didn't. That's the new Mike Shanahan show. Mondays at 6.30 right here on News 4, the home of the Broncos. Well, you know, I, I saw it, a problem with the punting game, and I automatically assumed it was CU. <laughs> Missouri punting the ball to CU. This is Trotman. He picks up four yards down to the Missouri 45-yard line. Thank you for correcting me there, sir. Oh, boy. You, know, you, you said it so convincingly, I thought I was looking at the wrong, <laughs> the wrong team. They, you know, black, black pants and similar colors. Second and six for CU. Approaching the seven-minute mark in this game. Picks up the first down and inside the 40. Damani Cross, the stop. You know, talking about the colors that each team wears, Missouri usually wears white pants, but the team will stay in black, home and road, for the rest of the season in honor of the late Don Faro, the former head coach at Missouri, former athletic director. He recently died at the age of 93. Faro coached at Missouri for 20 years, up until 1956. In fact, their field at home is named after Faro Field. And the players are also wearing stickers on their helmets that bear the initials DF. You see right there, upper right of your screen. Chris Naoli injured on that last play, kind of limping himself to the CU sideline. Buffs with a first down at the Mizzou 37. Hessler to throw. Going deep. Just out of the reach of Ray Carew. Well, with the wind behind them, they thought they'd take a shot at the end zone. Well, and they got the ball up over Damani Cross's head, the free safety. You can see a little bit short of that coverage. That's almost a touchdown. Very close to the play action with Ray Groove. Had a couple of steps on the two defenders. Hester just couldn't get it to him. On second and ten, they stay on the ground. Troutman is down. Missouri has gambled quite a bit tonight, uh, this afternoon, and four times the knots paid off that tackle by Steve Martin, but they bring both inside linebackers once again. The U marching band shows up. Rain or shine, or wind or no wind. Sound darn good today, too. Actually, they sound good every Saturday. And because it's homecoming, some of the uh, former marching band members, graduates, playing with them today. Third and 14. Hessler intercepted. There's a penalty flag down, intercepted by Clayton Baker. If it stands, it's his fourth interception of the year and the second today for Mizzou. It's going to stand because Colorado had two men moving at once. So Missouri will have the football. Getting a motion offense. Kemley has declined. First down. You see Rick Neuheisel talking to John Hessler. That was just a 
poorly thrown pass. And John knows it. I, he can hardly even keep eye contact with the head coach. When Troutman went in motion, the receivers were scurrying to the line of scrimmage to get set. And now Missouri with the ball at its own 48. This is Kenyatta Williams. Gets it across midfield. Pickup of three, maybe four yards. Nick Ziegler the stop. And Missouri. Not huddling up. Scornia, the swing pass. This is Williams again. He's got some room on the side. Finally run out of bounds at the CU 36. Kenny Wilkins ran him out. Nice touch of the football here by Scorny and Williams. Able to gather it in and get up field for the first down. Five fourteen to go in the game. See you leading twenty-one to nothing. Williams again. Hurdles one defender and stacked up by a few more at the thirty-five. Call it a gain of one. Rick Neuheisel still talking to John Hessler. See, you want him to get better. Doesn't matter if you're going to get the win here, but you, you want him to know that you just can't do that. You can't make throws like that because there will be games, plenty of them, in which something like that could cost you. Scornia going deep. Just out of the reach of the intended receiver, Frank Jones. And on the defense is T.J. Cunningham. Corny makes a nice one-handed catch of the snap. And then this is a pretty well-thrown ball. Very, very close. You see T.J. Cunningham doing a nice job of fighting with that right arm and then taking it away at the last minute. Scorny, as I mentioned before, a redshirt freshman. Came into the game with two touchdown passes and two interceptions. He's thrown for 210 yards on the season. Third and nine. Penalty flags down. That pass incomplete again. He was looking for Jones. Kenny Wilkins on the coverage. Less than four and a half minutes to go. See you. Has about wrapped up its eighth win of the season. Should put the bus at eight and two, four and two in conference. Getting a procedure, six men on the line of scrimmage. Offense, penalties refused, fourth down. Mizzou on fourth down, keeps the offense on the field. Don't have much choice right here. Down by three touchdowns. They've got to get it into the end zone. Field goal won't do them a whole lot of good. Receivers lined up to the right of the quarterback scoring. They come inside and we'll leave them. Just short of the first down. Looks like CU will take over on downs. I tell you, well set up play and maybe not quite as good a job running with the football as Rocco Lima is capable of. Flip screen to the middle receiver and Olivo, I think if he turns this thing up right here and just goes for it, got a chance. Steve Rosga on the stop and see you will take over. Well, be with News for Sports for the best in the high school sports on Saturday, December 2nd. It's the 5A State High School Football Championship game. The teams and the site still to be determined, but it promises to be a great afternoon of football, high school style. That's the 5A State High School Football Championship right here on News 4. Your home for high school sports. First down for the Buffs at their own 28. You can bet they'll keep it on the ground most of the rest of the way. That's Troutman picks up three yards. Alnut makes the stop.
One more game left in the regular season for the Buffs. It comes next week at Kansas State. A top 10 ranked team. And it will not be easy. Kansas State for real this year. That's the round today, 18 for 26. A couple of TV passes, a couple of interceptions. Facing second and six right now. Trotman. Up to the 35. About three yards short of the first down. It's amazing how quickly this conference has gotten so strong. There's really no patsy anymore. Well, you look at Bill Snyder and Glenn Mason, the job that uh, they have done respectively, Kansas State and Kansas, and those two teams have kind of jumped up and over a number of clubs. Kansas gets the win here in Boulder. CU has to travel to Manhattan to play Kansas State next Saturday. You mentioned that'll be a, a tough game. Timeout taken by CU. We'll keep it right here for you. Hey, who do you like in the Heisman? Really a mishmash out there, isn't there? Tell you what, if, if, I think if you had to stop it right now and vote, I'd vote for Tommy Frazier from Nebraska. I, I think he is uh, a terrific player. I know there's some that think uh, the Ohio State running back, whose name escapes me right now, may be the uh, Troy Davis. front runner. No, that's, that's Iowa State. The, oh, oh, Eddie George. Eddie right. George from Ohio State. Terry Glenn, the wide receiver from Ohio State, is a great player. But I, I think Frazier means as much if not more to a championship caliber team as all. Give some votes to uh, Troy Davis of Iowa State. I think he'll probably be in the top uh, five or six. Neuheisel loves him. He sure. says, hey, when you've run for as many yards as he has for a three and six team against the likes of Nebraska and Kansas State you and CU, he deserves some votes. Third and three for the Buffs after they take that time out. On the option, Hessler pitches to Trotman. It's on the turf. And a pileup. Hey, both teams had a shot at falling on that ball. Still no call on who it Yeah, they've called the CU with the, with the ball. Trotman just takes his eyes off of it. It's a good pitch. And as you see, a lot of folks with that opportunity. Here's the, the option. Troutman's just looking ahead. Can't quite gather it in. I think Darren Champagne may, uh, uh, Chivarini may have been the guy that gathered up the, uh, the loose ball. It's tough to see who had it. Something just happened at the line of scrimmage. An official is really ticked off and threw the flag. I think somebody said something. You know, when they get that mad, they, they throw it really high. <laughs> they take it in, and their arm goes faster, the thing goes higher. 15 yards, first down. Well, what a costly mistake. It was fourth down for CU. Missouri gets flagged, and now it's CU's ball still. They retain it on the penalty and have an automatic first down. Larry Smith, you can be sure this, this guy is a disciplinarian. He's going to get in somebody's face for that. What'd you do? was the last thing we could see Larry Smith say. <laughs> First thing I'm sure that player will say is nothing. But how maddening it must be for him after taking USC to the Rose Bowl three times, helping build that Arizona program into a contender in the Pac-10. And coming to Mizzou, he knew, he knew he had some work to do. I wonder if he knew there was this much work to do. In his second year with the Tigers. This is Troutman on first down. Back down from behind by Mark Alma. And Cave Lake. Hi there. Trying to keep warm on a windy day here at Folsom Field. Got the whole crew with us today. Our last game of the year for CU. And a great job once again throughout the season by the 
whole crew here at Blue Sport. Second and four. Drop it. Looks like he picked up the first down by just a bit. Now enough to tackle again. Some of the people who bring you the pictures and the sound from Boulder, from the Broncos games, from the high school championship games. Herschel Troutman has gone into three digits rushing. 21 carries, 100 yards. This give to Keith Miller. Young man out of Ovid, Colorado. Steve Martin to stop. Bill Johnson, say hello, buddy. There you go. And that's the shot you see from his camera. 30 seconds to go. Jeff DeMott on another camera. Miller again, tries the middle. That ought to do it. Colorado finishing up the home part of its schedule with a win over the Missouri Tigers. That ups the Buffs record to four and two at home. They're actually better on the road, they're four and oh on the road. Hang with us here. Our Mark McIntosh is trying to track down Rick Neuheisel somewhere in that crowd. And we'll hear from Rick as soon as Mac gets a hold of him. We'll also try and talk to some players before we sign off here. Buffs with one game left at Kansas State next week. And then it's on to a bowl game. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh right now. Well, thank you very much, Les. Coach Rick Neuheisel is looking up into the stands. Here comes Kerry Hicks. Kerry, we'll get you for a second. Uh, defensively, you guys uh, took some heat, but you come out today and throw a shutout, your first shutout of the year. Yeah, it feels good to get a shutout. We've been expecting a shutout since day one, and we haven't got it. We right, right, got it, so I'm happy. You know, the defense, you're coming into this ball game. I think the last couple of games, you were a bit embarrassed by, like, 32 points Oklahoma State. Did you do anything differently this week, or is the intensity just more? this week? No, we really didn't figure it turn up the intensity any. I mean, our coaches were happy with the intensity we've been playing, but we uh, had sat down on the first of the week and we had meetings and they told everybody we have to be a sign of conscience. They told everyone you have to be, you know, ready to play their responsibility every play, and that's what we did today, and we got a shot. Your final game at Folsom Field, your thoughts? Yeah, it was a, it was a good kind of, I don't know, kind of good feeling. I love this place. It's going to be a shame that I'm gone, but hey, you know, South Fork is. People come and go. Kansas State next week, uh, the Cotton Bowl really up for grabs there. Yeah, it really is, and we'd like to get our chances of playing a real good team and getting our chances of going 10 and 0 for the season. So it'll be a real big game for us. All right, Kerry, congratulations and thanks for stopping. Thank you. Kerry Hicks, senior defensive tackle, uh, talking about the Buffs trying to uh, pick up their ninth victory next week, and then if they went to a bowl game and won, it would be their 10th victory this season. And of course, that would give them the fourth highest victory total in one season for a University of Colorado football team. Rick Neuheisel got away from us and headed into the locker room, and Celeste will throw it back up to you. The Buffs register their first shutout of the year. Thanks, Mark, and thank you, Kerry Hicks. And we'll be right back to wrap things up at Folsom Field. Well, the Buffs with another win. 21 to nothing over the Missouri Tigers. The Buffs up their record to eight and two on the season. It was defense, defense, defense today. Yeah, that'd be one way to put it, I think. Uh, you know, you, you kind of get greedy, and I, I think Rick Neuheisel has addressed that the last couple of weeks. When you see this program, one that won a national championship in 1990, and you expect them to be at, at a national championship contender 
virtually every year. Then when things kind of go awry a couple of games, you get uh, you get down in the mouth and you, you expect them to be perfect every week. That doesn't happen with kids this age. And so I, I think the job that Rick has done, his staff has done over the course of the year, has been good. They've got one very important game left against Kansas State. It would really be nice to see them close it out with a win. And as you heard Kerry Hicks tell Mark McIntosh, maybe a secure a Cotton Bowl berth in the process. Now let's talk about that. Is the Cotton Bowl interested in the Buffs, and is it necessary to go 9-2 and two to get a berth in the Cotton Bowl? Well, I don't think they can get there if they lose to Kansas State. So I guess I would answer yes. I, I think it very much is a possibility if they can go to Manhattan and find a way to win. But judging from how Kansas State has played this year, that will be very difficult to accomplish. And in Rick Neuheisel's estimation, that is a very important bowl game to get to. Even though the Cotton Bowl is not part of the alliance, it is still a high-profile bowl, and it is still a very rich area, Texas, when it comes to recruiting. And Colorado's done a great job the last few years uh, going down to Texas and plucking some of some of the outstanding players uh, out of the Texas high school system. So I know Rick and his staff would like to get down there, and they've got uh, a tough work, uh, a week of work ahead to try to uh, make sure their club is ready to go Saturday. All right, Dave and I will sign off now for another CU season here on News 4. The final score in the final home game, CU 21, Missouri nothing. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Today's game produced by Terry Trevato and directed by Tom Richards. Our engineer in charge is Dan Reese. We'll be back on Saturday, December 2nd when we bring you the 5A State High School Football Championship. For Dave Logan and Mark...